Reba, Libby, and Tori. And we're going to share with you um, the name of God, one of the favorite names of God that we have. And it's called Jehovah Jireh. It's the Lord will provide. Why is God called Jehovah Jireh in the Bible? Well, provision isn't a word that most Americans have had to think about much in recent years, but now it's something that everybody's thinking about. We may use it to refer to unexpected upgrades in life. The Lord provided us with a new car, or the people of Bible Baptist Church provided us with funds to finish off the sanctuary and change up the platform. Some of us remember times when God uh, provided for needs in obvious ways, like a check in the mail to help pay for an unexpected hospital bill or a car bill. Lots of people in the church have provided things for our family to cheer us up during um, this pandemic that we're in. You might also think of provisions as things you might purchase for a road trip. And that's why I have these three guys in the video today. So tomorrow, Brian, Pastor Brian, is taking them all on a road trip down to Greenville, South Carolina to drop Tori off at her apartment. So. They hit up sheets with their favorite snacks, and they're going to share with you what they're taking on the road trip. I'm taking with me dark chocolate, my favorite. I'm taking with me fruit snacks and Jolly Ranchers because I can never have enough fruity candy. And I'm taking with me Tootsie Pops, her favorite. And we all can't forget Pastor Brian. This is his favorite snack in the world. These in combos. He loves these. So these are the provisions they're going to take on their road trip. And I'm going to stay behind. And my provisions that I've been collecting for our family, much like your mom, have been all kinds of things. What do we have in here, guys? Toilet paper. Lots of toilet paper, right? Lysol. Yeah, coveted item. Disinfecting wipe. Some hand soap. Hand soap, yeah. These are all provisions that we have been collecting for our family. When God introduces himself as Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide, it's not in the context of snacks or cars or money or bills. It's in the context of the most profound physical need a person can face, the loss of life. In Genesis 22, we read the story of Abraham being commanded by God to take his son Isaac to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. Isaac was a son of promise, a miraculous gift from God when Abraham and Sarah were old. He was the promised child who, whom God had promised to make into a great nation. He was God's provision, or so it seemed, until God said to lay him on the altar and offer him as a sacrifice. God the provider, Jehovah Jireh, gave life. He saved the promised son from being a sacrifice. He preserved his promise to make Isaac a great nation. He acted faithfully in response to Abraham's faith in his provision. Just as God is pleased to provide our needs, and God was pleased to provide a ram for Abraham, God's ultimate provision of his son Jesus Christ provided us with a relationship with God. What did Abraham do? He acted in faith and obeyed in the belief that God would provide a miracle of some kind. And God did, a ram caught in a thicket as a substitute sacrifice. Genesis 22, 14. So Abraham called the name of the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. As I'm sitting here looking at my three girls, I can't imagine choosing one of them to have to sacrifice. In fact, if I had to sacrifice Libby, I think she'd probably try to beat me up. Ava would run away. Tori, what would you do? I'd argue my way out of it. Yeah, she'd try to reason with me. I would be terrified. And yet, both of these people, Abraham and Isaac, both in faith, went to that altar, knowing that God would have a provision for them, a way out. Beyond providing for our daily needs in Matthew 6, Jesus tells his disciples, Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil or spin. In these verses, Jesus shows one end of the spectrum of God's provision. He cares for the smallest and even the inanimate in his creation. He clothes and feeds them. His eye is on them as treasure created things. So why should we worry about his provision? Are we not image bearers, uniquely made to be God's children? He provides as a father ought, exactly those things that are best for his children without hesitation and always at the right time.